Welcome back to Applied Mathematics. In this video, we're going to talk about problem solving with area and volume. That's a very weighty title. There's a huge realm of situations that can be solved by thinking about things involving area and volume. For the sake of time, I don't have anything resembling enough time to get into most of it. So we're going to look very restrictedly at Okay, you've calculated an area or a volume. Now what? Let me get my head out of the way, and we will dive right in. According to the manufacturer's instructions, one gallon of weather-resistant paint can cover 250 square feet. How much paint should you purchase to put two coats on the front face of a barn in the shape of a rectangle measuring 35 feet by 17 feet? There's a couple of things going on here. The first one I want to point out is how do I know that this problem is talking about area? And the answer is kind of boringly easy. I have a measurement here of 250 square feet. A measurement of square feet means that I have to be talking about area. So, step one of this problem is definitely going to be calculate the area of what we are measuring. The next step is the tricky one because it is really easy to miss. We're going to be putting two coats of paint. So we have to multiply the area we just calculated by two to get the two coats of the paint. It does say we are only going to paint the front face of the barn, so we don't have to worry about the other sides, but we do have to worry about the two coats. And then, once we have done that, then we have to deal with the unit rate. One gallon or every 250 square feet. When we know the number of square feet, we can use that unit rate as a unit conversion in order to figure out the number of gallons. So, three-step process for solving this problem. Each of the steps is relatively straightforward, but that's a lot. All right, start off with the area. We're dealing with a rectangle measuring 35 feet by 17 feet. The area of a rectangle is length times width. In this case, that's going to be 35 feet times 17 feet. And my calculator is quite happy to tell me that 35 times 17 is 595. Square feet. Now, Multiply that by 2. Because we want to put two coats on, we'll just take 2 times 595, which my calculator is happy to tell me is 1,190 square feet that we want to paint. Then my third step. 1,190 square feet multiplied by the conversion factor that I'm using out of my unit rate, which was one gallon per 250 square feet. So take my 1,190, divide by 250, and I get 4.76 gallons. Mm -hmm. 
this actually worked out really conveniently at the end, uh, which was not something I was anticipating because I made these numbers up as I was writing them down. But the question at the end of this problem always ends up one of, well, how do you round that? In this particular case, um, rounding up to the nearest gallon would give me five gallons, and that's the natural way to round. Thinking about the fact that even though I have two or three significant digits throughout this problem, I'm going to want to round to the nearest gallon because I have to buy paint, and paint is sold by the gallon. Something important to consider when you're buying paint, you always want to make sure that you buy more than enough. So even if it had come out at 4.13 gallons, I would still purchase five gallons of paint because having extra paint is not a problem. I would not ever round down and say, well, 4.13 rounds down to four, so I only need to buy four gallons of paint. Because sure, you're going to get most of the way done, but you're going to end up with a little bit left to cover and no paint left. So always round up, always round to the next highest unit. All right, one more example. A board foot is a unit of volume equivalent to a board which measures one foot by one foot by one inch. Before I continue, I do want to mention that a board foot is a very important unit of volume if you are doing um, woodworking, but really not of use anywhere else. And so I don't necessarily want you to memorize or be able to work with board feet on their own, but it is an interesting presentation here and a chance to play around with uh, the rules of volume, whether or not it's something that is going to be of interest to you. So we want to calculate the volume in board feet of a log with a known volume of 325 cubic inches. We're already at a place where we've made the calculation harder rather than easier because we have a log which presumably is closer in to shape to a cylinder than to a rectangular prism. But if you do happen to have a rectangular prism and you're trying to measure it in board feet, following the units given, well, if you measure one dimension in feet and another dimension in feet, and then the third dimension in inches, and multiply those together, the unit of volume you've created there by mixing feet and inches in that way is the board foot. That's why it became popular. That's how it became useful. That also gives us kind of the, how do we solve this? Because if I think about that definition of the board foot, as a shape that looks something like this, I can do some unit conversions. One foot is the same thing as 12 inches. And I can calculate that the volume of this thing is 12 inches times 12 inches times one inch, which is 144 cubic inches. Now, I can take my known volume, 325 cubic inches, and multiply it by the conversion factor that I just created, one board foot per 144 cubic inches. The cubic inches cancel each other out. We will be left with units of board feet, we just take 325 divided by 144. My calculator is happy to do that work for me. And it tells me that this is going to be 
2.26 board feet. All right, I hope that these examples have given you some understanding of the kinds of approaches I'm going to be looking at as far as how to use area and volume. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm really only scratching the surface of the possibilities. For anyone who continues onward, the second course of this sequence, we revisit this topic, we look at more interesting shapes, we look at more interesting applications, but for right now, I think this is a good place to give us a foundation. As always, thank you for joining me on this one, and I'll see you next time.